This is Blurring the Lines with Adam Bell and Peter Nicolaitis, IT entrepreneurs. Adam and Peter take on the topics of technology, business, life, and the pursuit of happiness and blur them together in the 21st century. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, and welcome to another thrilling and fun-packed episode of the Blurring the Lines podcast. This is episode number 92. Wow. That was the year I graduated high school. Wow. I have, <laughs> I have friends who were born in 92. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I am your host, Peter Nicolaitis, and with me, as always, you've already heard his voice, my co-host, Adam Bell. Hey, Peter. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, all things considered. Yourself? I am doing well. It's good to be in the yoga studio today. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. Uh, Speaking of yoga, uh, I've got another uh, weekend of teacher training starting today. Uh Uh-huh. And then I have another one on the 22nd. Okay. And then I have another one on April 12th. And that will finish my 200 hour. And then sometime between the, in the next week or so, I need to submit video of myself teaching as part of the practicum to finish my 300 hour. Nice. So by April 12th, I should have completed all of the requirements and I'll get my uh, 500 hour uh, certification shortly thereafter. And then I can do something else. <laughs> yeah, then you can pursue something Totally different. Totally different. Yes. That, that remains to be seen right now. <laughs> so. Well, I, I assume we're going to see that you've got to record it. Is that what you said? I've got to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So these so, are little, uh, little bits, though. These are just like little five minute, um, you know, snippets on a so, specific topic. So I won't see you on a 30 minute yoga instruction video on YouTube because I'd love to see that. Not as part of this practicum requirement, but <laughs> funny you should mention that. <laughs> Thirty minutes is perfect for me. Yeah, well, that's a that's a that's like three poses, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll see what we can do. <laughs> a little bit of cool down, uh, you know, cool down yoga sequence or something like that. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll figure something out. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, very cool. So, what else is going on, um, like uh, he- headlines and intro-wise? So, headlines for me, uh, this is the second week of CrossFit Open, the annual event where all the athletes around the world are submitting their – it's really I, – I didn't really think of it this way until I was just re- reading on the site to get the link. You know, they call it the – largest inclusive athletic event uh where and it it really is because you can't you can't join the olympics by working out in your own gym and submitting your score (laughs) (laughs) well i I, well i don't know why not it it may i mean maybe that's a very all that inclusive if you ask me yeah uh, it sounds sounds uh, sounds like a very good question because, well, like I said, you I mean you have, you know I do my workout in my gym and there there are, you know hundreds of thousands of people doing the same workout, submitting their scores, and out of the best of those they come together and do the real, open games. It's it's totally brilliant. I mean it's brilliant from a marketing standpoint. It's you know. You involve all these people that are allowed to participate in, you know, who's going to, you know, talking about the comparing it to the Olympics, you know, how many people get excited about the Olympics? A lot of people do, but I bet a lot more would do it if they were like, I was competing against Usain Bolt. He killed me, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but did he you see me, what I was competing against? I was, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, what last week, uh, George St. Pierre announced his retirement from UFC. Ah. And, um, you know, I think, uh, well, now that he's out of the way, I think I got a shot. You got a shot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want it. Look, let's just, let's be frank. Me versus St. Pierre. I mean, that would have just been completely ego, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 
but now that he's retiring, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of getting into it. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's sure, why not, right? What about that you and McGregor <laughs> dude? I mean, that McGregor. McGregor. Ah, screw it. <laughs> McGregor dude. I think he meant Connor McGregor. Connor, yeah. Connor. Yeah. You ain't the actor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, I mean, if I ever, if I uh, ever went toe to toe with Conor McGregor, I'd, um, I'd, I'd probably shoot him. <laughs> yeah, like Indiana Jones. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that you know, if we were going to brawl, I'd be like, this dude, I'm with this dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. No, uh, no. On, the, on the subject of Indiana Jones, I never went past the third movie. So, well, in my know, wife's opinion, there was no fourth movie. Right, but there was also what Young Indiana Jones was. That, I don't remember. Was that a TV show or something? Never yeah, saw it. yeah, it was kind of like a. Yeah, I mean, it didn't last long. Yeah, but I, well, I could tolerate the other more. That I mean, I was so disappointed in the fourth Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. I mean, Steven Spielberg, in my opinion, has a great, he's a great producer, a great, he has a great imagination. Yep. And it did not feel like it was a Steven Spielberg imagination. That, I mean, that was my big disappointment. I was like, you had 20 years to, to think of what would be, what would I do if I had to make one more? And that's what you chose? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned uh, 20 years, too. Um, I'm hearing... Oh, I'm he not a good thing. Oh. <sighs> yeah. So, I, <laughs> as I was getting clicking through the show notes, I accidentally clicked the wrong tab and I didn't notice. And I clicked into Netflix, which started playing scrollers. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Ah. <sighs> It dry, I, I want to open Netflix. I don't want noise and sound to automatically come out. I want, yeah. I, I should be able to turn that off. Exactly. I I'm already paying for it. So you yeah. don't need. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know. It's, I, it's, I totally got distracted. What was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about 20 years. I mentioned 20 years. You said so, funny you say 20 years. Yeah, so funny you mentioned that. Um, uh, a couple nights ago, I saw Alan Parsons live. Alan yeah. Parsons live project and uh -huh. some people, you know, if, if people are not a fan of alan parsons or you haven't heard the name or don't recognize it um he had uh well, he had some big hits in the 70s and you know in the 80s uh his last album was 15 years ago and that was about when i started getting into it <laughs> uh, um so uh, he made a joke about that you know so yeah we've got a new album coming out on april 26 you know the last one was 15 years we don't want to rush these things <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh if you haven't heard of alan parsons though you may have heard of such acts as pink floyd or the beatles and uh, he was a producer for uh, a couple of beatles albums and uh and pink floyd a little little album not many people have heard of it uh dark side of the moon yeah um yeah, yeah. i can't i can't think of that i it, yeah. it's not ringing any bells right right the bells um or the beatles album was um it was something like let 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 let, let it alone or I don't... <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah he's got some he's got some cred even if it's a little uh the, you know the tires may be balding a little bit but uh no it was a good show and uh, <laughs> you know, a w walking distance within my place same place where i saw ron white last month oh perfect yeah so that was that was fun uh yeah <laughs> cool cool so what else is new trying to get back into the show notes here and avoid netflix this time around <laughs> yeah oh, yeah, yeah. well so while you're looking for that speaking of netflix so the <laughs> you you had asked me well i started fire the greatest party and that never happened and because i was i was slightly intrigued about it and then i started watching it and then it we must have been advertised to by Netflix at the same time because right after I kind of quit watching it, you said, did you watch it? And I, I said, oh, I, I actually stopped. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you, you said, you should have skipped to the middle. But I mean, the reason I stopped and maybe had I skipped ahead, I, I would have finally like enjoyed it. But uh, deception bothers me. 
you know, and what it felt like was it was all a great big sham. Mm -hmm. And and those kind of things bother me. And I was like, yeah, I hate that part of movies, you know, where the 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 one character is mad at the other character because they think of something and they had lied to them. It was supposed to be a white lie and, you know, it add to the protagonist of the, you know, that, that whole part of the story. I hate that part of the story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so should we tell people the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the thing I'm a bobber, the show to which we're referring? Um, I did. I mean, I said the, the name of the show, oh, but we don't want to spoil it. Sorry. <laughs> I think we could, we could put a little bit of spoilers in there though. Okay. Uh, no, the, the, uh, so was it, was it, was the title actually fire the greatest party on Netflix? That, that never. The greatest party that never happened or something. Yeah. Fire yeah. the greatest party that never happened. Fire fire with the F Y R E. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's interesting. I, I heard about this on another podcast and um, just, it, it's kind of amazing. It was supposed to be like the, um, you know, modern day Woodstock, only mm -hmm. it was taking place down in an island in the Caribbean. Yeah. And it was just built on a foundation and, and every other component of lies it was just amazing the amount of just complete uh, you know don't you have to bleep me here bs <laughs> that went into this this festival that never happened and um but but more importantly like um that like the amount of just just like from from both sides not just from the people who were organizing it but they were also uh you know like drafting these uh, influencers that's the modern day term now for you know like social media following people with lots of yeah. followers on social media uh -huh. uh, to just say like, you know, like, Oh, I just heard about this amazing festival and it's going on down here and I'm doing this. And um, the people who had this uh, venue picked out, this was supposedly Pablo Escobar's Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pablo Escobar. I mean, you, you had me there. You're starting off with a fine upstanding citizen. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the people putting this thing on said that uh, they had bought Pablo Escobar's island. Well, they hadn't. They were they were merely leasing part of it, and then uh, it's just it's it's just amazing. It's just like one lie after another, <clears throat> getting to the point where they had tens of thousands of people showing up and absolutely nothing to do with like for this festival that was supposed to happen. <laughs> so I mean, it it's, seems it's, like though, you know, once that happened, they could have really made it. For real. I mean, if, if you and I, I mean, anybody, I mean, but if we, if we were like, Hey, wouldn't it be awesome to get all these people down here to the Island? And if we can get them here, if you had every, if you had every, that all that stuff there, you could actually just put on the actual event. But, but they didn't have any performers though. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> they just had a bunch of influencers in yeah. bunny rabbit ears uh you know and so they didn't have any talent there you know they had people like kendall jenner and the kardashians and stuff you know so, yeah so. but it seems like you know once you had the audience you'd be able to get well you gotta have something you have to gotta have something for the audience to watch well i know that's what i mean you you're like okay well hey wait i mean you're already lying i mean so you're yeah, already lying to everybody sure, right so, so like i i tell you peter you're you're a famous musician i'm like dude Lenny Kravitz is here, you know. Yeah, no one's <laughs> seen him, but he's yeah, trust me. He's, he's here. here. Come on, you need to come down and perform perform on stage with with Lenny. Then you go to Lenny. Hey, Lenny, Peter's yeah. singing tonight. You you should but join I think, us. I think I'll that's you kind, of what, kind of what they were doing too. But but you know the other stuff like um, uh, uh, it's just amazing. Anyway, yeah. um, Scott also friend and listener, uh, you know, friend of the show and uh, podcast listener, my friend Scott Wilsey, I uh, said he started watching it, but he didn't get very far until he decided he didn't want to see any more of those people. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I sort of, I, I follow, but, but he didn't get to see them get what they deserved. <laughs> yeah. yeah fascinating documentary uh not everything but um many things of what are what is wrong with our society these days I'll oh yeah leave it yeah. at that 
So well, that was since, we're, since we're talking about Netflix, did you uh, did you even consider you the the series you? I don't know that one. Okay, it's a um, the the main character is like you're not sure if he's not a serial killer or <laughs> he's definitely an obsessive compulsive like follows you know that starts off by him obsessing over this woman he meets okay like completely stalking her and stuff and it's not like horror or anything like that it's um it's actually not that bad as far i mean it's definitely not a not a kid friendly show uh but it's it was uh it was well done because you kind of you kind of like the main character who is a bad guy <laughs> yeah. But that, you know, that's something that's been going on for a while now. Yeah. I, that. I, I first started noticing that trend. Um, uh, well, she's, oh my God. Oh well, Dexter God. did a good job of that. Well, before then, though, I was going to say yeah. 20 years ago, but I'm now closer to like 30 years ago in uh, Marvel Comics, uh, particularly with the uh, anti heroes. Mm -hmm. you know, now, you like Wolverine. Not exactly what you would call a a, a great guy. Mm -hmm. you know? He's he's even a little bit worse in um, the Ultimates universe Marvel comic series. Yeah. But um, Venom, you know, the oh. Spider-Man bad guy, or the Punisher. You know, the Punisher at least like okay, his methods. Most people probably have some issues with those, right? But he's essentially going after bad people. Yeah. Whereas Venom was going after well spider-man and whoever else was getting in his way but they started they started taking all these bad guys and then making them like but you know if you look they kind of have a point so maybe they're not all bad yeah and, and then you know that became thing and so it's just like oh you know evil's all relative you know there's i was like okay it kind of is but i thought we looked at it from a certain viewpoint in which yeah they're clearly evil. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, but hey, you know, in in the spirit of uh, of of uh, red versus blue, you know, these days maybe we need a little more of that. So yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Show me all of the comic book villains and portray them as good guys. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it is. Uh, I don't know. I guess it is more realistic in in most cases that bad guys. There, there are truly evil people that do bad things and there's no good that comes out of them. But then there are people that, that do from their perspective, they feel like they're doing the right thing, but they are breaking laws mm -hmm. to do that. They think the end justifies the mean. Those are like one type. And then there are like other people who like completely deceive themselves and think that they're. <laughs> Which one do you think is Mark Zuckerberg? <sighs> You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know him well. I know that I don't follow him well enough to make a. a I don't care, but I, but I, either way, I want to see him come crashing down in a ball of fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's I just, just me. That's just yeah. me. I just don't have enough intelligence. I, I don't care about the guy enough to, uh, to uh, invest in researching him. Yeah, the, so. uh, the views expressed on this podcast are not necessarily that <laughs> Learn the Lines or Adam Bell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm apathetic towards him. <laughs> oh, so, well, cool. So you also had mentioned seven-minute workout slash treadmill. So, yeah, I uh, ran on a treadmill yesterday for the first time in I don't remember how long um over a year for sure possibly more definitely definitely more than a year so um yeah it's been cold again lately but uh, uh someone i know lives in an apartment where they have a gym and rather than paying for a gym membership or running outside in you know sub freezing temperatures just go over there and ran on a treadmill so yeah that my um my Apple Watch to a goal. The last time I remember running, oh no, I take that back. It wasn't. It wasn't a year. Take that back. It was when I was in Florida last September. I remember running in a treadmill at the resort there. Okay. I did run there. That, that time it was too hot outside, too hot and humid to go out. So I <laughs> right irony. Anyway, um, 
the last time I had done an indoor run though, I had just set a target of 300 calories. Whereas when I do an outdoor run, I normally set a target of 5K. Okay. So, you know, I was back because at that time last year, I was just going for like time or, or calorie burn as opposed to distance. So I let that go. Um, ended up, you know, putting in more than 300 calories, but my time was pretty pathetic. It was like on the higher end of my average for my outdoor runs. Okay. And um, I felt fine the whole time, you know, felt, felt great doing it, felt great afterwards. A little sore today, you know, feeling good. <laughs> But I don't know that was so much from the run as from the seven minute workout that I did beforehand. <laughs> and um, so again, I've been using this app. Uh, I forget which one, cause there are a number of them. It's just called seven in the uh, Apple app store. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, got an Apple watch app, which is how I use it primarily. But uh, the way they do it is the, the main classic seven minute workout is free. And then every day there's a different one that you can do for free. Usually I just do the classic one. And of course the alternative is that you do in-app purchases and you subscribe um, and then you pay something like eight bucks a month, I think. Um, I forget how much it costs. Uh, yeah, oh, 79.99 a year or $10 a month if you want to. Uh, <laughs> and then that unlocks all kinds of different workouts that you can or you can just take a random one for free every day when they give you those okay so uh yesterday i did one of the random one and it was all a lower body one and it was three short circuits repeated over and over again um squats there was one i forget oh um uh bulgarian um bulgarian squats where you bulgarian have split squat Oh. Or as we say at our Krav Maga school, Bulgarian split squats. Bulgarian, yeah, yeah. I would, I would agree with you guys. Yeah, because the way my teacher has us do it at the at the school is, you do it with a kettlebell, take a kettlebell and and you're hoisting it straight up overhead. And, yeah, and and then you're doing the squats, the Bulgarian yeah. squats. So you know, like I think more than once people have dropped the kettlebell on their head doing that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I did not use the kettlebell yesterday, um, but I did that. I forget the other um, in between workout. Oh, uh, leg raises, one one leg uh, lifts, and then jumping squats into lunges. Oh man! So lunge, switch lunge, and then jump into a you know jumping squats. And boy, after just the second round of those, my legs were really tired. After the third <laughs> round, I just collapsed on the ground. <laughs> I was lying there. And then I went home, you know, went, went over to uh, my friend's house and ran, you know, 300 calories or so, however, yeah. two point some odd miles. So, so my lower body's kind of tired today. Uh, <laughs> but but I, uh, I made up for it and ate like a pound of tuna and a couple of cups of rice. One thing, <laughs> One thing I don't miss about not being on the slow carb diet anymore, rice and popcorn and hey. a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I've got a question for you about, about yin yoga. Can, well, really yoga in general and just stretching. There's, there's no reason you can't do yoga every day, right? I mean, you can't overtrain or overstretch, can Are you? You can certainly overstretch. Okay. Um, but in my experience, it's far less likely that you're going to overstretch from doing it too often. It's more like you'll likely do it just too far in a single session, pushing too hard. Mm -hmm. As long as nothing's hurting. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing is, though, there's a fine line. Yours truly overdid it uh, just this week in a yin class. <laughs> okay. So we were doing uh, a bunch of, it was not one of my classes. It was a, a class I was taking, uh, but we were doing a bunch of forward folds. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. and uh, actually I overdid it and uh, just stretched my neck a little too much. Mm -hmm. And the problem was that I was working with under normal circumstances, it would have been fine. Um, but I have a little bit of a, a back shoulder thing that I've been working on and I kind of tweaked that a little bit. But 
it didn't really get back the the uh, the uh, the coupe de grace or the uh, piece of resistance was when I came home that night. I had uh, washed. I decided I was going to wash the, the 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 comforters and stuff on my bed, so I was one layer lighter than normal. Mm -hmm. So I got cold. Now. I could have gotten up and gone downstairs and emptied out the dryer and brought the thing, but that's four stories down counting the basement. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to do that. And I could have also, you know, like walked down one story. Well, I said it was only two stories down because I was on the second level. I could have gone down one story and turned up the heat, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> or I could have reached over and grabbed the phone or my watch and turned up the heat. But I didn't want to do that. <laughs> or I could have just said, lady in the tube, turn up the heat. Did I do any of these things? No. So as a result, I unconsciously just like curled up into a little ball with my head and neck in a weird position and was in pain for about uh, two and a half days. As uh. a result. <laughs> so long story short um you you can definitely overdo it um i mean honestly i would not recommend i mean there are plenty of people do um who will do the same sequence every single day mm -hmm. yoga, yoga is the same sequence bikram yoga is the same sequence um they're generally pretty all body stuff yeah uh, I would, you know, recommend not doing the exact same thing every single day, unless you're doing an, a complete all body workout. You yeah. Know? If you are, then, Hey, you know, sure. It's uh, you know, but like anything you, you can have too much of just about anything. Yeah. Uh, but what I usually try to do is um, you know, yin yoga on one day and then more active stuff the other day. Mm -hmm. In an ideal world, I would be alternating, you know, and doing like intense yang style martial arts, jujitsu, krav maga, mountain biking one day, yin yoga the next, mm -hmm. and just you know keeping that pattern up. It doesn't always work that way though. Yeah, because I've kind of got my pattern of um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is CrossFit, and Tuesday and Thursday is yoga. Yeah. And I, in a little bit lazy on my part, I've well, I do every CrossFit workout before I start and bef and when I get done, I have a number of yoga stretches that I do to keep me functioning. Uh, but some of those like pigeon or uh, sleeping swan, that one always, I end up doing that every single time I do yoga period. Uh, just Great. because, <laughs> yeah, it's one of, I mean, it's one of my deficiencies is my hip, hips are tight and they're so I mean they're so much better than they used to be right because I pretty much do it every day that particular but I mean some days I hold it for a really long time and then some days I hold it long enough for for stretching purposes only but I think I'm going to mix up my uh, the two days that I just do dedicated yoga um, doing two different workouts rather than the same and the only reason I I just haven't found a second workout that I really like because um, some of them are, I, um, I, I like that guy, Travis Elliott, I mentioned, and I would like to find another workout that he does or somebody else does like him because I like his style. I don't care for some of the um, yoga moves that I kind of feel like are ultra feminine. <laughs> <laughs> Such as... I don't, yeah, like the ones where you stick your rear end way up in the air like a cat and, you know, I don't know what they're, all their, it's just some of them are yeah, like, like, okay. Cat, cat, cow, and downward dog kind of thing. Yeah, but some of them are like, you know, and then rotate your hip while you're doing it. And there, there are women doing them. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want somebody look in the window and see me. <laughs> 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 doing don't yoga. do yoga right in front of a window man Come on. <laughs> doing yoga like that <laughs> so, i don't i don't have that problem yeah <laughs> i know i don't care so, i'm usually i'm usually practicing right up the front of the room so you know mm -hmm. whatever <laughs> but anyway my i i, I would say you, you you can overdo it and most people are probably nowhere near 
the danger zone of overdoing it. And, and that's where I think that I am. Nowhere near the danger zone. <laughs> All right. So we want to move on to uh, a couple of hardware reviews. All right. So, so I recently uh, went round and round about whether I was going to buy uh, the Apple's new Air, the Mac Air. And I really wanted one, but I wanted the full functionality of, of what it, well, in this case, I needed full functionality of Windows because a couple of the applications I want to run are not on Mac. Right. And the only way that I could get them is a virtual machine which I don't want to do. Fundamentally, I don't want to install a, you know, a Windows virtual machine on my perfectly good Mac <laughs> for the functionality of a couple things. Uh, so I ended up going with uh, Dell's answer to the Mac Air, and that would be with quotes around it because there is nothing like um, Mac's stuff. I mean, there's a lot of imitations, and but I, the stability. I was is, gonna say it depends on what you mean by nothing like. I mean, there are, you know, Shenzhen Province. There are things that are really, exactly. really like the Macintosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm talking about in the uh, in in the United States where we are with real with manufacturing laws that are honored and copyright laws that are yeah. honored and. <laughs> but but as far as like form factor and hardware specs go. There have been Dells and Samsungs and stuff that are spitting images of the MacBooks. Yeah, and Asus, they make them too. Uh, but yeah, so the, the, the XPS is really kind of a, uh, a, a good answer to that for people that have to run Windows. Uh, it's got similar, um, it's got similar issues or, you know, there are no CD-ROMs anymore. There are no USB ports anymore. It's got. I was gonna say you're lucky if you find any ports. Well, does yeah. it have USB-C? It has two USB-C ports on it. So no classic legacy USB. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I'm referring to USB as legacy. Yeah. <laughs> Back when when you know and when 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 USB came on the scene, everything else was legacy and USB. Yeah. You know, so anyway. nine pin. <laughs> Serial. Yeah, all those PS2 <laughs> adapters and VGA ports. Wow. <laughs> so the it's got the two USB-C on there, and it actually does have one headphone jack in it still, which mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. But yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will only charge on the left-hand side, and I think that the I'm pretty sure that the Apple does the same thing. It will only charge in one of those C got ports. It. Understood. Okay. Uh, so. But it is a nice design. I actually have it right here with us in our video. People can see it, but it's a nice design. It's the two in one. It flips all the way over and makes a great big tablet. Mm -hmm. And that that seems to work okay. It's now the, not, the XPS line has always been like the premier, you know, high end gaming hardware stuff from Dell, right? Workstationy things. That's right, and it used to be exclusively gaming. And they, you couldn't even buy it from the business line. It wasn't until recently that you could buy it from the business line uh, because like I have an animation studio and they wanted XPS desktops for their animations and then XPS laptops. And like I said, you, they weren't Optiplex. So, and they, they weren't Optiplex and they weren't Latitude. So you couldn't even buy them from the business side. You had to buy them from the retail side, which is, not ideal, but they have evolved. And so this one came from the true, the true business line. And I made one mistake when I was purchasing it or when I was buying it, I did, uh, uh, being a, being a computer guy, my plan was to buy the cheapest version mm -hmm. and upgrade because I have the capability to upgrade, you know, why, why, I'm an expert. It's going to be free labor for me to do this. <laughs> because your time is worth nothing. <laughs> My time is worth nothing. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I looked well, and I knew that the Mac had fixed RAM on the board. 
So it didn't have a removable RAM. So I knew you had to buy it with what you had to buy it with. So the new one or the Dell didn't have fixed RAM and I could increase the RAM and I could increase the hard drive. Yep. Well, the mistake that I made was that I looked up a previous version of XPS 13 that you could add RAM. You cannot add RAM to the 2019 version. I was yes. going to say, <laughs> you know, that, that, that um, fixed RAM amount kind of thing is becoming more and more common these days. I was surprised <laughs> you found something where you could still upgrade it. Yeah, yeah. But you, you didn't. Not, but, it, but no, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, I got 8 gig of RAM. An 8 gig of RAM with a solid state drive and an i7 processor are I have enough power around the the processing and the hard drive access speed that I'm with what I'm doing with that computer I'm not going to miss the RAM I mean I'm not going to be my Chrome will take up a whole lot it'll be the majority of the RAM utilization on that thing so yeah. Yeah. so I, I mean even if I'm doing pictures uh, because I bought it to to be able to take it and do photography stuff while I'm while I'm out. Right. Um, and even my pictures, I only have one picture open at a time, editing one at a time. And if I'm running out of RAM, I'll close Google. I mean, so unfortunately, I need I wanted 16 gig. I got eight, uh, and I did get the 256 gig drive, but I I did buy a 500 gig drive, and I'm swapping swapping it in okay so so i can do that uh but overall i am pleased with it. i've got one thing i gotta work out though is the mouse the mouse um i'm using the bluetooth mouse not the usb mouse because i don't want to attach the dongle to run the mouse right <laughs> and it's kind of glitchy yeah. and so i've got to do a little bit of troubleshooting to determine if it's glitchy because Bluetooth is glitchy or if it's glitchy because of the mouse that I bought and I bought a jelly comb mouse. I never sounds delicious. Sounds delicious. Yeah. I've never heard of them before, but it's got an, it's got a really nice click feel. I, I can't, it just, I don't, I don't know what it, I can't even describe how that, why it feels good. It doesn't, it's not like a hard click. It's like a gentle click and I don't know. Feels nice. But if it's glitchy, it's garbage. It's dead to me. You know, <laughs> I'm going to throw it in the trash and replace it with one that is not glitchy. But I'm, I'm hopeful that it's a driver issue that I can fix with a driver. Uh, but it may be glitchy because it's got, it does have the US, it's a, it's a dual mouse. It'll do Bluetooth and it will do the uh, RF or whatever the, whatever the wireless frequency is so I can plug up the USB. Yep. So I'm going to test that, see if that's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, I did buy some pretty cool dongles to go with it. Okay. So I got, you can see here, I got an anchor USB-C. Yep. Primarily for me, it's really important to have an ethernet jack because as a technician, a lot of times I need to get on the network on the LAN, not on the wireless to test some things. So this thing's got three USB ports in it, an Ethernet, and an HDMI port for video out. But you know, I needed at least one VGA port just in case. You know, I'm somewhere with a projector and I need to project, or, and the, they don't have a, not all projectors support HDMI. Some of the older ones are still VGA. Mm -hmm. So I bought a separate one for VGA. Now, of course, right after I bought this, I found one that had all these ports and the VGA, <laughs> but it was a square. That's like a tiny little docking station right there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. But I mean, like, like this guy is long, like, a, you know, like a three quarters of an old fashioned Tootsie Roll. You know, it fits in my bag real nice and doesn't take up much space. But, you know, a box or a, you know, a square version of it with one less USB port. I'm not so disappointed in my, you know, having to have two dongles because I'm going to need the USB and I'm going to need the Ethernet way more often than I'm going to need that VGA. <clears throat> so overall, I'm pleased with it. VGA is not so commonly required these days. 
Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, this past weekend, I was at church doing a presentation, and the only thing that they had was VGA in. Well, church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, in the in the business, you know, in the in in the boardrooms now, they've got more HDMI is real common, yeah. and you know, like down at the farm, I like having the HDMI because then I can I can plug straight into that and go right through the TV because you know, one thing that I found, this is totally, I mean, a little bit aside, but with, with Netflix and even with Amazon, uh, whenever I'm playing through my computer, it caches way better than the smart TV. And I'm guessing it's because the smart TV has less cache available to it or yeah. just the way that it operates. Yeah. They're smaller in storage for sure. Mm -hmm. Because it'll be real glitchy where if I set my laptop there, I mean, and I start it and pause it, you know, it'll build up enough cash there that I can, I can play it without glitch. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, cause, uh, you mentioned these, you know, like the little dongles and stuff. Cause I have a bunch of those, uh, somewhere around, I had a USB adapter, which was a port replicator and also had ethernet right out the back of it. Mm -hmm. I can't find it right now. I don't know what happened to it. So, I don't know. But um, what I suggest we do is, so you went with the high-end ultra portable solution. Mm -hmm. um, next week, we should talk about my solution, which was to go in the exact opposite direction. In the low end. <laughs> I ran screaming <laughs> towards the low end and bought myself a Samsung Chromebook. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I will go into all of that next episode. Okay. Well, cool. Yep. But um, yeah, any so any other things that you want on your nifty tech uh, gizmo for this week? No, I think that was it. I kind of had, uh, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned in there, I kind of wanted to get your opinion on. So I ordered a new hard drive, which is really awesome. This is my hard drive. It looks like a stick of memory. Looks like a stick of memory, actually, and it's even a little bit smaller than the old stick sticks of memory. Of memory. Yeah. <laughs> it's even smaller than a, you know, the small RAM. So I, I ordered it through Amazon. You know, first first world problem, but it was a business. I mean, it was a business problem and a business purchase. So I purchased it through my business channels. It just so happens that they tried to deliver it to my home, which is also my business. I mean, I've got business office and I've got office office and UPS came to drop it off. I wasn't here and they left a note and said, you have to go pick it up at the UPS store. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I, I mean, I paid for a delivery. I didn't and pay. Instead, you got an errand. Yeah. And yeah, instead I got an errand. And, you know, I, and I, I wrote the vendor and I said, look, I'm not pleased with this, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, I understand if there's a risk, you know, that you don't want to assume the risk of if it gets stolen off my porch, then you've got to replace it or the carrier has got to replace it. But there's a signature checkbox that you say deliver, even if no one's there. And I would have checked that. <laughs> that so if you don't offer that as an option, I assume it's not a option. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And UPS delivers to my house all the time. And I mean, we know the UPS people, they leave stuff for our dog. Like they, they carry dog biscuits with them because my dog's a yip dog. I got a yipping dachshund. And so they always bring the dog a treat. Uh, not always, but sometimes they do. And, so I'm like, they know the delivery person knows me, you know, but they had instructions they had to follow. And so I wrote them and said, next time, please give me an option <laughs> to say, leave it on my porch. Cause I've got a camera on my porch and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so what's your opinion on that? I, I didn't get bent out of shape on that, but I was just like, what was, you know, so, you, so whose fault is it? Was the, the vendor for not offering you the option to leave it at your place, would you say, or, or what? Yeah, I mean, if there were, 
yeah, I mean, that would be what I would have liked them to do to I make mean, it a better transaction, make it yeah. an option. Is there an option to like redirect the delivery? I know sometimes you can do that, but if it's maybe it's too late, sometimes you have an option where you can just say, you know, I want you to redirect this over mm -hmm. to here, for instance. Yeah, well, I, I could have done that. Or if I knew that that was going to be the case, I would have just delivered it somewhere else. But there was no reason to think I wouldn't be at my house when yeah. they came because UPS comes at 6 p.m. Yeah. I'm always home. <laughs> now, I have definitely had, um, like, I forget what it was. I've had computers left out on my front porch, you know, right by the street. Mm -hmm. Yet I've had things like a, um, a packet of uh, 1099 forms required a signature and be delayed for days because I wasn't here to sign for them. So yeah. It's just kind of like, yeah, really? <laughs> so, yeah. But, well, and, and yeah. in things like that, you know, you kind of have to, I mean, make some sort of provision for that, but like I said, it wasn't an option. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a little bit of a late start, so we're going to have to wrap up just a tiny bit early today. Okay. Um, but um, your uh, summary on your uh, four hour work week challenge? So my four hour work week challenge, I'm averaging down to 49 hours per week. I'm getting close. And how many, where did you start? I started at 57. Okay, all right, that's, st I just observe, I know I've said this before, it's still a lot more than four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, I'm, it's, the, it's based on the premise of four hour week work week, but it, I'm mm -hmm. not ever, uh, I don't have a goal of four hours. I have a goal of 40. <laughs> yeah. The 40 hour work week. I don't think that would sell. Yeah, no, you don't. Well, maybe it would be a very small niche. I mean, you know, entrepreneurs would love a 40 hour work week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there are, you know, but hey. <laughs> All right, so we need to wrap up, but before we go, um, I wanted to leave with this and we'll add a link in the show notes to uh, this Tesla on ice. Uh-huh. Um, a uh, toasted Tesla Model X was found <laughs> in Vermont on uh, Shelburne Bay. So like people will go and, you know, drive their cars out onto lakes for uh, ice fishing. Uh huh. And apparently, somebody did this with a Tesla Model X, the SUV option. Uh, it's a short article. It was on on TV, so you can watch the video if you want. And I have a correction too. Uh, Shelburne, Vermont's the byline. It's um, uh, by Don Amato, posted last night on uh, WCAX.com. It's not something you see every day. A Tesla Model <laughs> X burned to its shell on Shelburne Bay. Shelburne police responded Sunday night. The owner told police he was going ice fishing and he thinks he hit something with the car. But investigators are still trying to figure out how the fire got started. No one got hurt. Police aren't sure if there was any environmental impact and there is a plan in the works to remove what's left. A new Tesla Model X can cost up to $82,000. Yeah. All right, first the correction. No, a new Tesla Model X starts at $82,000 yeah. <laughs> and it only goes away. And in fact, that, I think that's even wrong. I think, I think the new Tesla, I think the X's start at a hundred. Oh, wow. So they don't cost up to 82. It's more like they could cost up to 182. Um, so they're, they're expensive. But what I think is funny is like this thing was burned, right? But it's still sitting there on ice, literally on ice. Yeah. And you know, you think through. that, Maybe we would have melted through or something, but no, uh -huh. it's, it's just sitting right there. It's just like you just see the roll cage and uh, the seats and you know tires. I guess they're they're still left. So those batteries yeah. would have burned really hot. We would have thought one of them had dropped through the ice. You'd think, you'd think, but uh -huh. hey, there you go. So <laughs> uh, yeah, yet another uh, Samsung uh, burns burst into flame. Uh, yeah, Samsung, sorry, Tesla. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking of you know the Galaxy fiasco. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a guy at the gym. Uh, he's he and his wife both have Teslas, and uh, I was joking with him. And he's kind of got a dry sense of humor, and he doesn't always. I guess he wasn't catching on to the joke. I, he came out. He 
he's in a Tesla. I know he's in a Tesla. He and I have talked about him being in a Tesla. And I said, Hey man, you left your car on. And he, he looked at me like, I, I couldn't leave my car on. It's a Tesla. And then, and then he says to me, he says, uh, Oh, you're, I thought you, you're joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Yes, I'm joking. <laughs> we kind of not true. You can leave it on. It does have an on mode. Mm -hmm. um, and and I one time or uh, two two occasions accidentally left it on and left the heat running during the winter time because the door didn't close all the way. Uh huh. So, yeah, so you can leave it on. Yeah. So that did lead to the conversation that he said that he didn't tell me which model, but he said there was other models of hybrid electric vehicles that the 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 perimeter key they don't have a perimeter key so they actually have to turn the vehicle off mm -hmm. so they would park their car in the garage go inside the house the battery would run down on the car the engine would start and run the house full of carbon monoxide nice <laughs> yeah. i recommend against that yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not a good, you know, because it'd be hours before the battery would be completely dead. You know, the car would start up in the middle of the night and yep. poison the household. Wonderful. <laughs> Kill your friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On that note, we need to wrap up. I've got a roll. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, but we will resume this next week. We'll have some fun. And um, what if uh, somebody wants to get in touch with us? What do you suggest? If somebody wants to get in touch with us to leave us some feedback or they would like to discuss a particular topic, you can drop us a line at www.blurringthelinespodcast.com. There's a form filled there with uh, so whatever the CAPTCHA so that we know that you're not a robot. And if you send us an email, it'll go to Peter and me and we'll be glad to talk to you. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you're a real person, not a, uh, a scammer or a uh, commercial, we would love to talk to you. <laughs> exactly. On that note, I need to roll. Um, have yourself a wonderful weekend, Adam, and listener, assuming it's uh, around the weekend for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will talk to you next time. After we hit the big red button. To contact either us or our guests, visit blurringthelinespodcast.com. If you like what you're hearing, do us a solid and subscribe to our podcast and leave us a five-star review in iTunes, Google Play Store, or wherever you found us.